Hi everyone, it's October 11th. I always have to look at my computer to see what day it is. I don't ever know, but it's October 11th. This is Tuesday, you're here at the weekly chaos community call. So hi, hope you're having a good day so far. Um, yeah, there's the minutes in the chat. Uh, you know the drill, add your name if you want. Um, or if you don't, totally fine. Camera's on and off, totally fine. We're really chill here at chaos. So come be chill with us. We love that. Yeah, um, let's look at our agenda. Here it is. Um, the answer, uh, please answer this question for us. It's 2050 and you're writing your autobiography. What would be its title? Assuming I'm still around then, I don't know. I mean, Anita, it might be tight. Anita has the book title award for me so far. <laughs> Because so, I'm imagining what I look like in 250. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. That is great. And shots. <laughs> I mean, that would actually be the title of my autobiography. <laughs> Mine is just she tried, like, <laughs> messed a lot of stuff up, but you know yeah. what? She tried. <laughs> Yeah. My, my tombstone's going to say, I told you I was sick. <laughs> I never listen. <laughs> that, that could also be the title yeah. of my book, is they never listen. That's yeah. true, but it's all right. <laughs> uh, these are awesome. Okay, so a few things. Mostly uh, the stuff on our agenda is the reminders and updates. So if there's an update that you want to hear from someone, put it on here. If you have something new to add, totally fine. You know, you know the drill, add whatever, change whatever. If you see something on here that you're pretty sure you're gonna be the one that has to give the update and you don't wanna give an update today, that's also valid. It's okay, it's all right. I don't mean, cause I don't like wanna put anybody on the spot, but I also don't like give people a heads up that they're on the agenda. So that's my fault. So just use me as your, as you're like, I will totally take the blame. I'll take the blame for everything. I don't care at all. It's usually my fault anyway. So yeah, it's totally fine. Okay, uh, first one on the agenda is this reminder um, to please take our chaos community survey and share your experience with being a part of um, our chaos community. There's the link right there. The survey is open until tomorrow um, and it is a completely anonymous survey. So you can be totally honest with us and that's exactly what we want. What we're trying to do is make the chaos community more welcoming, more inclusive, um, find ways that we can be better and how we can better center DEI in our own communities. So we really encourage you to, to take a few minutes and just share experience as much or as little as you'd like to provide. Um, and again, that does close tomorrow. So we would really appreciate um, your feedback before then, if possible. Uh, any questions on that survey? I suspect everyone on this call has filled it out. <laughs> if not, you can go do that. I mean, maybe not right this second, because <laughs> yeah. there's stuff here also to pay attention to, but you know, hey, whatever. Um, and also, you know, if you had started it and you need to finish it, don't forget to go back and finish it. <laughs> we would love that. We would really appreciate that. So, um, yeah. All right, well, we'll move on if nobody has any other questions or comments about that. So the next reminder is just that we are having the, our next onboarding meeting on November 2nd. Um, that's our onboarding call um, that we're trying out. Ruth and I are trying once a month for um, bringing new folks into the chaos community and giving them a, a broad overview of what chaos is about and how they can get involved, and where to go. So it is a little bit more of a presentation format than our open office hours, which are just, you know, come and go, come ask your question, stick around, leave, whatever you want. Um, this is a little bit more of a, a, a presentation format. Um, we did one before and I think it went okay. Uh, you know, it's always interesting to use someone else's slides. <laughs> 
the <laughs> truth and I was doing. So, um, you know, it, it was good. And I think um, hopefully we uh, covered all the questions in that presentation. It is recorded, so you can uh, go look at that. It's on our Chaos Cast or Chaos Tube channel on YouTube. So you can go watch that if you are a newcomer and you're watching this meeting or you're here in the meeting and you want to go watch that, um, that's there for you. But we will do it live and, in, and I was going to say live and in person, but live virtually uh, once a month, um, the first Wednesday of the month at 11 a.m. U.S. Central. So anybody have questions or comments about that? Are those, are they attended as well as the office hours or at least the one that you did? Uh, it just depends. I think, um, I'm trying to think how many people were at that first one. Maybe like three or four. I don't even remember. Yeah. I know it was literally last week. I have, I don't remember how many people were there. So I have to go back and look at the recording to see. Um, but we usually get, you know, office hours can be anyone, uh, any number from, you know, one person comes to, I think we've had up to seven people or eight people in that when it's like outreachy time, you know, mentor, mentor program time. So, um, so yeah. Anywhere in between there is good. Okay. Thanks. And hopefully it's going to be like a, um, a resource that people can reference, you know, and, and so that they can have something to, to go on before. Because, you know, what happens sometimes is people will come to the open office hours and not even really know what to ask because they don't even mm -hmm. know anything about chaos. So we do end up kind of going over things, but um, this way that at least they'll have like a base <laughs> of knowledge about chaos and something that they can, okay, now I want to know more about X, Y, Z. So yeah, any other questions about that? Uh, comments? Anything? Do we think that's a good idea? I mean, I guess we'll see how it unfolds as the months go on, but um, any anybody have any comments or recommendations on how we can do that better? Would love, love, love to hear that. So, yeah. I mean, I, I dropped in on the first one and I thought it was going well. And I, I think, you know, you can't predict who's gonna show up and you haven't done it enough to know, so. yeah. Just keep doing it to learn what works. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll just keep iterating on that. Okay, so the next item is a reminder about this Ospology Live event happening in Sweden in a few weeks. Um, eight, eight days, next two weeks, the next week, something. Um, so Don, Sean, and Daniel are going to be giving a talk on chaos. Um, Don or Sean, do you want to say anything more about this right now? Plug it a little. Um, you don't have to. I mean, uh, Daniel's going to provide a history of chaos and an overview of the software and metrics components of our of our legacy or our history or what got us to here. And Don's going to do a demonstration of what or description of what she's doing with chaos metrics at VMware. And I'm going to be describing our metrics models initiative in summary. So I think it's a, a nice sort of arc of the things in chaos presented in 30 minutes or 45 minutes by uh, three chaos folks. Is this something that will be recorded to you all know? No, I was looking. I don't think I didn't so. see anything like about I don't think it's live streamed at all. They're pretty clear on that. Yeah. But then recorded, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be recorded. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. But the idea is that we'll do these, these Ospoology live events, um, basically kind of in various places that want to hold them. So it's, it's focused on Ospos. It's kind of um, a to-do group organized thing, um, but we could do them at other locations. All we need is a space. So I think there are other other places. I think the next one's gonna be in Amsterdam. Um, you know, if, if people have space that they wanna lend to something like this, we might be able to do one in your local area as well. But the idea is that these are kind of kind of local. So they, you know, they talk about things that the local group is likely to be interested in. If you think there's any merit to, or if you have any desire to do one, um, like on this call or maybe the OSPA working group call um, that we could record and post, I think oh. would be awesome.
but if not i'm like if not if that if, if we want to keep that with to do that's also totally fine um just to, just throwing that idea out there if you all think that that would be something of interest to do you mean do sort of an encore of the presentation and record it so we can put it on youtube yeah yeah when it's all said and done just so we kind of yeah. have that asset for people who are coming into Os the ospo group or um, want to know you know just more about chaos from an ospo lens so yeah that's a that's a really good idea let me um let me make sure first that's not actually right. being recorded in which case we could just use that um but if not we'll I think it would be pretty easy for us to do it. We could even do it as like three separate, three separate chunks and each just record our own and do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or we could record it while we're having beers on Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do that. <laughs> we'll make sure to have subtitles for any yeah. <laughs> speech. Don, do you know if the way that you um like request an ospology live is the same sort of process for the ospology. So that was like, it was a GitHub form that I filled out for the one that we did last week, was it? Mm -hmm. um, um, I think, I'm not sure what the process to request them is. Okay. Um, I would think that probably I, I would start and ask Anna. I can, yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank see, you. See what she thinks and okay. what the right process is. I mean, I kind of selfishly want to request one for Cincinnati, just so y'all come visit me and we can hang out. I mean, can I, think I do if, that? Yeah, <laughs> I think there needs to be some ospos in the city where it happens, but I don't know that Anna would be against. <laughs> I'm sure she would be supportive of that getting organized. I mean, we have we have some companies here. I don't know yeah. if they have ospos or not. Maybe maybe we should convince them that they should, and that's why we need to have the event here. I mean, it's a big consumer product consumer goods economy there right mm -hmm. yeah we got procter and gamble and kroger right here so you know yeah i would think there'd be an open source something around there yeah in all seriousness i might actually look into that so yeah i'll see what what i can find yeah i'm selfish and i want to see my friends looking, looking through <laughs> there are also local host like an ospo meetup which seems different obviously than ospology live yeah the ospo meetups are designed to be more more frequent kind of regular mm -hmm. and just like like basically like a user group right it's just like you know an hour or two um and those are those are kind of lightweight so we just started the first couple of those it kind of started because there was a group in uh western switzerland that wanted a french language um meetup okay I think I saw that come across. Yeah, but it does have to be. Um, it has to be kind of hosted by someone who's a to-do group member. So there's some criteria around those those meetups. Okay. I think that the group to-do group is big enough. There's probably a member in every city. <laughs> Thanks for dropping those links. Uh, in the chat, Matt, um, do we want to put those in the minutes too, or maybe we should put those in the minutes too? Just yeah, I think so. We can do that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Daniel, Sean, and Don, for doing those and helping spread the word about chaos. That's awesome. Any questions about this that we did not answer? I think uh, actually, Sophia had a question about: Will there be a live Q and A? Do you all know? Yes, there is a Q and A section in the talk, and there's also a there is some unconference event the next day. I guess my my selfish interest is that I have a general sense of what chaos does, but I'm really curious to hear what various audience members are interested in learning more about. Um, so I just feel like the QA components and side conversations, I think if you have any way of recording what happens, like I'm just kind of curious how how these things are received and where people have more questions or they would want to see chaos in the future kind of feedback for us as an organization. Like I, I'm personally interested in that and I think others might be as well. I don't know what the best way to do that is without adding more work to the team that's doing this already. Um, but I just would be curious about that. 
I think we could try to take some notes about the feedback. I think that's probably, if it's not being reported, that's probably the best we can, the best we can get at this point. <clears throat> Maybe you don't write it down. We can just quiz you at the end. <laughs> What'd you learn? Um, that works and it, sounds, <laughs> it sounds like these are just in-person conversations. So it might, it might be pretty informal. These are in person, right? Yeah, this one is. There yeah. are some virtual ones that we've done it. Yeah. Well, exciting. Thanks for doing this. Well, we should have a recording of the kind of the uh, chaos ospaology that we did last week. And there were quite a few questions. So maybe we, uh, Anna's in at Open Source Lisbon right now. So she said she'd try to get the video posted by Friday. So that might be something good to have a look at the, the questions that were there too. Yeah, I think that would be helpful for our ospology or ospo working group, I mean, um, too, as we kind of start things off and yeah, great. That's great. Um, I, I agree. And I also want another side note for others that are getting pulled into similar conversations or QAs. It's I just feel like it's helpful to, to get a general sense of how these things are coming up in various communities. So I know I'm going to be doing a panel representing a chaos and OSPOs in another event in a couple of weeks. So I'm happy to share what I learned from that experience and sort of similar, similar vein. One of my takeaways from the event last week was some of the questions felt very early. So like, you know, we like the work that y'all are doing in your OSPOs, you're at, um, you're doing some, some really advanced work. And I think some of the questions were just like, how do I get started? Like, where do I even start connecting the OSPO within my organization? I wasn't expecting that yeah. you know, just personally. So that, that was, I thought an interesting observation. Thank you. Where are you, where are you giving a talk, Sophia? Um, I'm gonna be part of a of GitHub universe on a talk on how OSPOs are using metrics. Okay, cool. So it's gonna be with Arfon and then some other folks I haven't met yet. Um, so he's somewhat familiar with chaos clearly. Um, and so he looped me in as, as someone who's in an OSPO as well as someone who's working with chaos. Awesome. That's great. All right, and then um, when that schedule comes out, Sophia, let us know. We'll help promote that also if we if we can. I don't think they've released that schedule yet, have they? For GitHub Universe, okay. Um, no, I think we're a last minute edition because I don't know. We filled out those forms. It's everything was due September twenty third, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> that was a little while ago. It happens. <laughs> All right. So let's go on. I'm not sure if Ruth is on the call today. I don't see her. So um, I'm not sure, Enoch, uh, or if you have an Hacktoberfest update or a Chaos Africa update, I know they kind of overlap. I did see that GitHub, we on our on our Chaos Org, we have tagged a few repositories with the Hacktoberfest label, the, the tag. So um, that's awesome. And um, it's in the, I linked to it in our newsletter, which I just sent out this morning. Sorry, it was late. Um, so uh, that link is there if you want it. I can also drop it here if, if we need to find it, but I don't know if there's any updates on how that's going. I have no idea. Yeah, um, hey everyone. Um, quick update about that. So far for the issues that we tagged with the Oktoberfest label, we haven't yet seen, as far as my GitHub notifications can tell me, I haven't yet seen any conversations or anybody come up to take that up. Um, we had two folks who showed interest last week and they were well attended too. Um, most of the contributions they wanted to make were no code contributions. And um, I think um, they were directed to the right people. I am not sure about how that is doing, but of course, in the end, I don't think um, we need to mind about um, what they're doing and how they're doing it. 
until they show up maybe with um, pull requests or review or when they ping us. But of course, um, I don't think um, we need to follow that up uh, until they show up. So, so far the, the hit is really low about the participation, but of course it's a good thing. Um, at least we did our part and um, we can't control how that goes. Um, about Cares Africa, I am not sure what update to give, but of course um, the hit is um, too much in Cares Africa. We have a lot of folks joining in and um, I think um, we need to just discuss about how to keep um, the community more active than um, just attending the bi-weekly meetings um, in terms of creating activities around um, Chaos Africa and also getting them more engaged because as far as I can see, um, and that could really be reflected in the following that we are gaining on Twitter, it's really moving um, so, so fast that um, we may need to keep the community engaged and um, give them um, some things to keep them really active in the community. So um, apart from those, I'm not sure whether Ruth would have more insights into these, but that's all I could um, give about the Chaos Africa and Hacktober Fest. Thank you, Enoch, that's perfect. And then I'm guessing, Matt, did you want to say anything about the Open Collective? Yeah, I just, I'm not sure where I've talked about the Chaos Africa Open Collective account. Have I talked about it here? I was like, you have, it. yeah. Yeah, okay. it was here. here before, yeah. Okay, so anyway, just wanted to put that out there again that we're still yeah. heading this direction. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Imagine there's a lot of paperwork. Yeah, well, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. You know, going back to Hacktoberfest, um, would it be helpful? I don't think we've tweeted that from the main chaos account. So would that be helpful, do you think, to bring some visibility to, to the fact that we're kind of participating? Well, I, I don't know what that changes, though, because um, as far as I know, if someone is interested in Hacktoberfest, a simple GitHub search as long as um, the labels are attached to your repository, would um, show up um, your your repository in one of their searches. So, well, we could try it out, but well, like um, Sean and Mart were advising um, some days back, I think um, we could just appreciate the fact that we're participating, but also um, know that um, it's really not um, something that um, we're putting up on the front and trying to push for it too much. But of course, um, I think we have done our part of um, sieving out some of the issues um, the folks that would be interested in um, contributing to would get um, their hands on. So I don't see it necessary for now, but of course, if it's a good thing, if, it's a, if you have some time on you, we could do it. Fair enough. I think it also too, if if those issues don't get picked up during Hacktoberfest, like they're still good kind of newcomer type issues anyway, right? Yeah, sure. And um, by mistake, like I think how I was showing you some hours back before we got on the call, I just found myself implementing um, some of the things again I had assigned to October 1st <laughs> issues because they just overlapped an implementation I was making and I was like, oh, I can't skip this, I can't skip this. So yeah, you, you, you may even never know where we could have those ticked off in case they're not attended to in the coming days, just because of maybe the developments we're trying to, 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 to put in, in polishing up um, the budging process. So just in case they're not picked up, um, we could still clear them off or for those that can't be, um, we could leave them as good first issues for anyone who may join in later. Fair enough, that, that makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, well, thank you for giving those updates. That was awesome, appreciate that. Does anybody have questions about Hacktoberfest or comments? Uh, questions about Chaos Africa, comments, anything? 
Um, I, I, I think I think um, I want to reiterate that um, I think it's important that we get um, how we get ways of managing the Chaos Africa community, given the fact that um, the numbers are growing. Um, I think we wouldn't just love people to come around in bi-weekly meetings and always get updates of um, what's chaos and what do we do and how you can participate. I'm looking at um, a direction of um, giving it more engagement than actually information about what all this is. So just reiterating to give it um, some kind of um, brevity. Well, but I guess um, it's a discussion that I will have to also hold with Ruth to see how we how we come up with some ideas about this. And also Agreed. keep the whole team in the yes. I think th in particular, so it seems like if someone has design experience, we, we have more of a path for them. Like there are more direct mm -hmm. things that they can work on. Would, would that be a fair? statement yeah yeah um that could be a case in point um but yeah. oh well oh you're interested you're interested in these oh we have these you could work with this we have this and um i think it would also well take some some um, resources into managing the community just to make sure that um well um everybody's being catered for and um people are well placed and um um, everybody feels like um, they are actually contributing something here. Um, could be for only Chaos Africa, but also for the whole Chaos um, project. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have that spreadsheet of the teams. And so our original thought was that we would leave it up to the individual teams to kind of um, uh, pull out some opportunities or some places that could use help. Um, do you think that that, I know that the, the list of teams is a little buried right now because it's just in a spreadsheet. I know the idea is to get that out in the knowledge base and get it more visible. Um, do you think that that will help or do you think that that process needs to be like better or or like what what do we need to do maybe with the, the this team concept to make that more effective? Uh, um, but by team, you're talking about um, the spreadsheet that Mart came up with that was having um, the list of people that are assigned and are responsible for the particular um, stuff going around chaos. Yeah, oh, I thought I had it oh. on here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a spreadsheet. Um, for the first time, you don't have a link to the document. I know. <laughs> you know what it is? It's because I'm, I'm logged in as chaos, not me. It would come right up. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I think I think um, th th there is still um, some kind of oblivion between. Um, um, I, I'm sure there are very many folks in Chaos Africa that have never crossed um, the Chaos Africa community to know that there is a wider audience outside Chaos Africa. I don't know how Ruth introduced this because I wasn't around in the first meetings while she was trying to um, build up this concept and getting um, the pioneers on board. But I'm sure um, there are people who have never crossed the Chaos Africa line. And I think, um, I thought actually would have more of them in the Chaos um, onboarding call. And also, I don't know, I've taken long without joining um, the office meetings. I don't know how many join in, but I'm sure um, maybe uh, we could um, introduce them to the greater community because I I I I I I feel to me that uh, it just sounds like a working group. I'm not saying it's a working group, but I want to term it as a working group whereby every folk in the working group knows that um, there is a bigger community that um, I should always maybe catch up with or attend meetings with or that integrate with and know that, um, well, we can have this here, but also I could participate here and there and not be like, um, well, there is Chaos Africa and I think that's all. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are some folks who still think that um, Chaos um, Africa is like um, the top thing. 
yet to me my mind feels like um well if they know if they know that this was like a sub a sub um a subset of uh, the whole chaos it would be great to them to know that our contributions and our engagement do not end at um being in chaos africa well i my 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 points are really just scattered in the head but of course the whole point is rotating around finding um engagement more than just having um information forward to them that hey welcome here and there you could be here you could be there i don't know how we do that but i think um i'll try to continue discussing this to see how we put some meat onto it so that was well said enoch i thought that was a really interesting observation too so thanks for that yeah you're welcome yeah, and I think that, like you said, that's something we could, sorry, my dogs are also trying to participate in our conversation. Um, they have a lot to say. So, yes, um, that's something that we can work with Ruth, too, like you said, um, just to kind of brainstorm some ideas of how we can bridge that um, that gap a little bit better. Yeah, that's really well said, like Matt just said. Anybody else have yeah, comments well, on this? Yeah, I think I will just make an action item for me just not to forget so that we can have this conversation with Ruth and get more information at least so that we can have updates in the next um in the next community call and just to throw this out there something that we've done with the Asia Pacific community is just take a little time mm -hmm. to update that that community on kind of what's also happening in the broader community mostly since a lot of those folks aren't able to attend this meeting because it happens midnight for them <laughs> so um we do make a kind of a more of a concerted effort to just make sure they know what's going on um and i'm not yep. sure uh if that's something that uh, ruth's been doing or if we need to do or if that would help what do you think yeah i think i think it's it's a valid point more so now i could give a case in point that um we've been talking about the the the, the ospo the ospo session and I think um, this could be some of the information that we relay to the other community to know that, hey, actually we're in Chaos Africa, but Chaos is having such a program, or you could participate in such a program that Chaos is also participating in, so that um, they know that I'm um, well, oh, there is something beyond Chaos Africa that is really happening around. As just giving a case in point for, for that, but it's a good idea. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Enoch, for, for being that point of contact today. <laughs> Whether you knew you were going to do that or not, you, you did great. So thank you. Yeah, well done. <laughs> thank you for jumping in. <laughs> All right. So let's go on. We have about 20 minutes left, right? No, ten, we have 10 minutes. Ten. <gasps> I can add. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, Anita, is there anything to bring up? It says survey is now available. Interesting. I would love to hear what, what's going on with that. Well, yes, um, finally and officially, the uh, Matt told me that the survey is good to go. Like, um, so I think I would start um, distributing the survey forms on the different um, communities that I've listed out. And also, I want to post it on our Twitter, the official Chaos Twitter, for awareness as well. But um, so, there was this spreadsheet that I got and um, a few communities were listed on it. Let me drop it here. So I'm going to first reach out, um, send out this um, survey form to these communities. But if you have any other communities to suggest, I would also take that as well. Can we add this to the minutes too? So just yes. for reference. Yes, thank you. And so if people have um, personal contacts at places, um, they should drop them in the spreadsheet. Yes, just drop it in the spreadsheet. And if you also know of a community, you can also help like waveform. So.
Anything else to add to this topic? I'm adding one name to the Fedora project. I can guess who you're adding. You <laughs> Okay, uh, in the interest of time, we're going to move on because I think we do have a couple other um, topics. Um, Kevin, do you have an update on website knowledge base? Or I don't mean to put you on the spot either. So if there... uh, sure. So that, that project is is still moving along. Uh, as a reminder, the we're kind of coordinating between the, the website design project, the knowledge base project and the uh, community handbook project. Uh, so because of that coordination, uh, it is a little bit of a kind of a, a slow go for us. Uh, but uh, as of right now, the uh, the front page of the website, which is where most of the design work uh, is being done, is for the most part done, we just need to create a little bit of content for it. Uh, but the, the main thing that's stopping us from uh, actually kind of going live with those website changes is we're, we're trying to uh, we're trying to finish up the knowledge base and then Yash is still Yash is still doing work on that uh, so connecting the uh, the knowledge base to the handbook uh, making sure that we have uh, at the very least all of the basic handbook pages that we need uh, to create the, the uh, the user paths that we have uh, defined. Uh, and then uh, there's also some uh, content creation on those knowledge bases uh, itself. Uh, so as soon as as soon as the knowledge base work is done, uh, that'll allow us to, to go live with the rest of the uh, the website changes. So the, the knowledge base is really a it's a big part of the uh, kind of the the new website design. So uh, if it's if it's not finished, uh, it's kind of it's stopping us from changing the uh, the main navigation for the for the website, which would uh, kind of encompasses everything that's there. Uh, and additionally, there there are many links off the new home page to the knowledge base. So so really, we're just uh, we're we're moving the knowledge base forward, uh, and hopefully we'll hopefully we'll be able to go live with all of the website changes uh, within about a month. Hey, Kevin, I have two like just really functional questions. Yes. The one was, um, so I was I was updating a metric model today to include links out to, you know, the associated metrics. And yes. I just, I provide those links, you know, to chaos.community slash metrics slash whatever the metric is. Mm -hmm. Will that work still? Uh, so when the, when the website goes, uh, when, so when the, uh, when the knowledge base replaces our existing metrics pages, yeah, the answer to that is going to be no. We That's will have to change those okay. links. And what, uh, what would they change to? Uh, it's it'll be very similar. Uh, so the the name will be very similar. It'll just be uh, it'll have like KB. Okay, I gotcha. So it'll uh, still like KB be on the, so. it'll be like still on the web page it, it wouldn't be a link out to the markdown file because that would be the other option no and in, in yeah in in the past we had determined that uh keeping them on the website for that uh was uh was desirable okay so we had uh it is hot we we could uh link to the markdown uh but that would mean every 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 metric that you look at on the website would take you to a different repo basically yeah it would yeah uh, okay so when uh when we do make this change we should be able to go through and just kind of do a uh a, a pretty easy kind of search and replace okay to add the new the, the new part to the the url okay uh and then, these, and then we'll provide new guidance in the template as well Yep, oh, uh, that makes sense. So like how to track that down. Yeah, and and alternately we can. So we do have all of those previous metrics pages created. Mm -hmm. So at least for a short period of time, uh, we could leave those links active. And just they're kind of hidden on the main page, but they still link out to an existing metric. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. 
Can we do um, something with regex to sort of remap those so that they would redirect? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that that's what I was uh, kind of alluding to earlier. Okay. A pretty a pretty easy search and replace. So it's it's. Well, a, but that's a search and replace, not a not an HTML redirect. I think it's different. Well, you said regex though, so the uh, using regular expressions to uh, do a search and replace would be pretty easy at the. Uh, uh, at yeah, the markdown I, was page about level. Using, I was talking about using regular expressions to do an HTTP redirect. Okay, so we do we do have the ability to do uh, uh, link redirects on the website itself, so we would not need to use uh, regular expressions for that. So we we can we can actually just do link redirects fairly easily. But does that change your answer to Matt's question? So if somebody clicked on one of those old links, would it automatically redirect to the knowledge base? Uh, I mean, there, there, there are two different options to do it. I think that the better way to do it would be to provide new guidance on the links and go through and just do a, a search and replace. Uh, we could also, as we could, we could redirect those links as well. Uh, the, the search, here's, here's my concern with the search and uh, replace. Sorry, I'm being a little pedantic, but no, search and replace is great for our website. But anywhere else that we've linked to specific metrics from presentations, from other other people have linked to our metrics from other websites, the search oh, okay. and replace doesn't cover that. That's that's I, why I think we gotcha. need to redirect. So absolutely I, on our website, do search and replaces and fix all the links because that's perfect. Okay. But I'm just worried about where we've linked to it from other stuff. Okay. I, mean, I, so can, I can say from my experience, like I've stopped trying to link to metrics in Augur because the links haven't been stable ever. <laughs> so if... I mean, I think the most important thing is a stable, a commitment to stable links for the metrics going forward, because that really enables a lot of what we're talking about here. Okay, so one of the one of the reasons, actually, one of the one of the reasons that we did decide to take over uh, hosting the website ourselves was actually to give us more control over redirects. Uh, so that is something we have control over, uh, and that is. Uh, it's probably something we need to define a process for uh, uh, kind of using, uh, but but yeah. So I I understand what you're saying now. So I would say I would say both of those things would be good. So one to uh, add the redirects and two to also go through and uh, and uh, provide new guidance on how to do those links and do uh, uh, a search and replace on those. Uh, uh, it's an, and actually, it wouldn't actually be a search and replace. It would, we we would just we just need to search the URL, and we just have to add a little bit of new uh, new text to the URL, um, which would be very very easy to do using regular expressions. Uh, but the uh, the redirects we have a we actually have an application on the website where we can manage those. So uh, it's just a matter of defining a process for adding URLs to that list. Cool, thank you. Okay, we are sadly out of time. Um, we can continue this conversation next time if we need to. Yeah. I'm very sorry, Georg, we did not get to your charter. Well, that's all right. Well, okay. I think we're at a point where we need to talk about forming the group. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If you want to start Definitely. that asynchronously, Georg, that's cool, and we can come yeah. back to it in the meeting next time. Do we? Uh, were we going to clean this duck up, or what were we doing? With Georg this duck? was cleaning it up, I believe. Okay. Am I right, Georg? Most of the changes have been accepted. I left comments in here for when the group starts meeting that we can. We still have that discussion present, and then we have here at the top something that I haven't didn't want to decide by myself. Okay, so what's our plan moving forward? Do we want to talk about this, like defer this to next week? Do you want to try to set a, up something asynchronously? What do you want to do, Georg? Let's figure it out next week. Okay, so we'll move this to the first item. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't have time to reach up and put the mute on. Bless you, Sean. Oh, uh, 
It's Missouri. It's it's allergies. So basically, the entire states thought they had COVID for the last two and a half years because we're always having runny noses, watering eyes, sneezing. Sounds like paradise. I can't <laughs> wait to come with you. So, it is. Yeah. It's a wonderful climate. <laughs> Thankfully, you're not on the Missouri uh, travel tourism board. No, because... yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started on Missouri <laughs> wine, <laughs> which is actually a thing. Missouri wine, I didn't know. No, I know. Better you don't. <laughs> so once again, don't put That's me on the tourism board. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for Thanks. coming. Such a great meeting today. Thank um, you everyone. We'll see you next time. Hi, Hi everybody. Good one. Bye.